Let's take a look at your little extramarital escapade, Julie. Let's list everything a cheating wife says when she gets caught, okay? Popular responses include, I didn't mean or intend to hurt you, or he doesn't mean anything to me, it's just sex. As if that's supposed to fix everything, it might just be sex, but it's sex with someone other than your husband. Okay, two more popular answers. I love you and only you, plus I will do anything to make it up to you so that we can continue our life together. First of all, I don't believe you fucking love me. You are not doing what you should do to the one you love. Secondly, do you really think there's anything you can do or say that will make me forget that you're just a lying, backstabbing wife? So do you think? Have we covered all the excuses in the cheating wives guide? Maybe this my fault? Did I not pay enough attention to you? Or did I spend too much time at work? Or did my business trips leave you alone too often? But wait, none of this happens in our case. My lottery win means neither of us will have to work. With the exception of your trips to the spa, gym, or shopping, we are together almost all day. Maybe I spend too much time golfing or playing ball too much or fishing too much. That's the reason why you cheated on me with some other man. It can't be because I don't do any of those things. All I do is take you on expensive vacations and treat you like a queen. That's all. Is there anything I'm missing? No. Well, let me state my point of view. There is no excuse for you to become a cheater. There is no excuse for what you did. You majored in journalism, so let's look at five aspects for our little news story. You, of course, remember who, when, where, what, and why. Let's look at them one by one. Who? I don't care, and I don't want to know. If I had known, I would have ended up in jail for assault or possibly murder. When and where can we gather together? When? This was last night. Where? It was in a motel room, at least this time. I don't know of other times or places, although I'm sure there were several. What? I think we both know what exactly was in your little romance, don't you? And finally... Why? The most important thing about the question why is that I don't care. I don't care why you had sex with an asshole or whether they were assholes. It's enough that you did it. How did I know about this? It wasn't difficult. Example, there were weekly four whore trips to this bay. When you got home, the only difference was that it felt like you had just taken a shower. Your hair wasn't done. Your nails were the same as they were when you left and you were too tense, hardly after the massage. After spending two hours at the gym twice a week, your workout clothes weren't sweaty or even very wrinkled. Then there were birth control pills. I accidentally found your hiding place in the back of the closet. Why are birth control pills needed? I had a vasectomy before we got married because you didn't want to have children, and you didn't like using condoms. The only logical conclusion was that you had a lover or lovers on the side. Everything else was just a matter of following you and observing your actions. Covering your tracks is not your thing. My first reaction, the first thing I wanted to do when I walked into the motel room, was to physically hurt you both. I wanted to knock everything to hell out of that stupid head and slap you in the face. But I stopped myself, thank God. If I had started with him, I'm not sure I would have been able to stop. It would be too much if I had to go to jail because of this idiot. You were never in danger. I would never hit a woman. But damn, there was temptation. Kicking his ass and slapping you would hurt both of you, at least physically. But it wouldn't make you suffer the way it hurts me right now. So here's the thing. Pack up your junk and leave. Go away before I forget that I don't hit women. Don't call me. Don't leave messages. Don't text me. Don't try to see me. Lose my phone number. Forget where I live. And forget you ever knew me. There will be no conversations, no marriage counselors trying to justify why you behaved the way you did and help me get through it. No discussions or therapy to help me forgive you. Because I can't and won't. The divorce laws in this state are as big a piece of crap as you are. We are a no-fault divorce, so no matter which partner screws up or how badly, they still get half of it. There are several states in which I could sue you for breach of contract. I wish we could live in one of these. Oh, I could sue your lover. He hasn't worked for the last year. I'm guessing that's how long you spent my money on him so he could get used to the lifestyle he wanted to lead. 
You get your share of everything in the divorce. Maybe this is what you wanted all along. I really don't mind if you get half my money. I'll still have more than I can ever spend. What rubs salt in the wound, what chills the skin, is that you will be paid for tearing out my heart. I wish there was some way to hurt you as much as I do. I wish I had some magic wand or phrase that I could use to make you feel like I do. All I can think about is this. If you really love me as you say, your punishment will be that you won't be able to be with me. You can spend my money, but you will grow old without me. Every time you go to some new exciting place or see something new, you will realize that we could enjoy the trip and adventure together. It probably won't bother you, but I like to think it will. I have to think so. It's a defense mechanism. I'll tell you what will bother you. When your actions are made public, and they will be made public, I will make sure of it, your reputation will precede you. No man in his right mind would want anything to do with you. No one will want to have a real relationship because of your track record. You will have to go through life alone, or with men who only want to use your body or my money. One last thing. I wouldn't count on dealing with that piece of shit you cheated on me with. Looks like he got into a fight with a guy and got his ass kicked. During the fight, he was told that if he was in town the next day, it would happen again and again and again, until he leaves or until he dies. You do realize that this little town isn't big enough for the two of us, right? How do I know this? Do you remember my friend, an ex-prisoner? Well, I told him my story. It sounds like he told the story to a friend, who told it to a friend, who told it to another friend, and the last friend was so upset that he talked to your lover. This piece of shit left town yesterday. I guess he didn't think you were worth fighting for. He couldn't hold you with a broken arm anyway. By the way, I was playing poker with a few friends when this all happened. I ended the conversation. Like I said, pack up your junk and leave. I'll be back in a couple of hours, and you better leave. Take nothing but your clothes and jewelry. Your car will stay here. You can call a taxi or someone to transport you. Whatever you leave behind will be donated to the Salvation Army or something like that. I'm warning you, Julie. There better be nothing missing from this house except your personal belongings. You don't want me to tell another story to my ex-con friend. About three hours passed before I returned home. Most of Julie's clothes were gone. There are a few pairs of jeans and cheaper items left. Her jewelry box was gone, as were most of her cosmetics. I will miss her. Not the current lying, cheating whore, but I will miss who she was. She was a beautiful, sexy, powerfully built blonde who liked to loom over me. We had a good time together and the sex was outstanding. She embarrassed me sometimes, but she really made me feel good. I decided that my friend Jack Daniels and I needed to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. As I poured my first glass, I looked ahead. I'm not going to roll over and die, and I'm not going to do anything stupid like turn into a drunk, but I'm going to be sad for a while. I poured another glass, took a sip, and then decided to pour the rest of the bourbon down the sink. There is no need to move there, I thought, and then said out loud, Life goes on! Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.